friends after knowing what is unconformity and what are the different major phases involved in formation of unconformity and knowing a brief about what are the consequences of unconformity in the site let us try to understand detail more detail different type of unconformity how to recognize unconformity in the site and what are the possible effects of unconformity on the civil engineering structures like a dam a reservoir etc yes as just now we mentioned these are different stages of formation of unconformity obviously there should be formation of older set of rocks like this that has to be formed then there should be upliftment because these deposited materials are below sea level there cannot be any erosion so unless there is an a kind of upliftment and sub aerial erosion of the rocks below possibility or there can be a climate change suddenly the sea level may move down because of the global climatic change sea level may move down possibility so either upliftment possible or global climate change where sea level moves down the already deposited materials can be exposed they can undergo erosion so there is a sub aerial or erosion of these rocks then formation of younger succession again there should be climate change sea level should rise or there should be a kind of tectonic activity subsidence these rocks move below sea level and there is some space for deposition that is formation of younger succession of beds above the surface of erosion these are the major steps these are facilitated through tectonic movement or global sea level rise and fall etc therefore these are important stages of formation of unconformity now after knowing the stages and we shall try to understand the different types of unconformity and we can classify them people classify unconformity based on the relationship between the rocks below and above the unconformity layer or people also consider attitude depend strike of the underlying rocks and overlying rocks we try to adopt take into both and we shall have different type of unconformity type we shall try to understand we have basically angular unconformity one disconformity para unconformity non conformity these are different types of unconformity based on this relation we are able to identify classify yes what is that non conformity now if the rocks see these are the sedimentary rocks layer rocks they are all found on igneous rocks now these rocks and these rocks are of different carefully follow rocks below the unconformity are if a plutonic rocks igneous rocks this kind of unconformity is called non conformity what is the message we have a set of or a kind of igneous rocks plutonic igneous rocks and this rock perhaps was on the land undergone subsidence we have plutonic rock below and it was submerged under water this plutonic plutonic rock plutonic rock on which sedimentary rocks are formed then it is uplifted we have a plutonic igneous rock on which sedimentary rocks this rocks perhaps undergone some period of erosion and weathering that may not be visible recorded not necessary a 
period of non deposition also would do means in simple we have an unconformity in which below the unconformity they are of a plutonic igneous rocks above that it's a sedimentary rock this kind of unconformity is called non conformity a classic example is we have well in grand canyon america beautiful and now disconformity rocks below and above the unconformity are more or less parallel that is a disconformity rock suppose this is a irregular surface universal symbol of unconformity which uneven surface means ir a period of erosion that we call because of weathering and erosion uneven surfaces are formed therefore universally this is a symbol of unconformity and this this if this is the unconformity rocks below and above are nearly parallel this kind of unconformity rocks here and here are nearly parallel rocks above and below the unconformity if they are parallel then that kind of unconformity is called disconformity okay another type of unconformity para unconformity this is not everywhere seen when two sets of beds are parallel and the contact is a simple bedding plane between this and this is a simple bedding plane the unconformity is called para conformity in such case the unconformity is, is inferred by features like sudden change in the fossil content we have a layer of rock we have a layer of rock we have a layer of rock that is a simple contact of bedding plane how do we know they are again still parallel they then difficult to understand for example if i have this a layer of rocks and only here it is very local outside again this area this area it is not there this kind of unconformity locally developed it is a kind of disconformity but locally important in disconformity rocks below and above are contact see they are parallel to each other they are parallel to each other sedimentation continued but if they are parallel to each other here also they are parallel to each other what is the difference this is only locally important but if i have the fossil fossils here if there is a change in some properties there is sudden change in the fossil type or compaction composition of the bed color of the bed something of this clear indication that there is a unconformity but these are very local but create some kind of confusion i have to distinguish them from the disconformity or other type of unconformity so friends there is a one more kind of unconformity which i have shown in my first photograph if this is the unconformity if these are the rocks and these are the folded rocks are like that then rocks these rocks and these layered rocks are not parallel there is a angular relationship then that kind of unconformity is called angular unconformity the first photograph i have shown just i take you to to yes sorry yes see these are at an angle these are also sloping but this contact this contact they have angular relationship and this is a kind of angular unconformity therefore we have different type of unconformity now yes yes now 
how do we recognize the unconfirmity? We must say, now whether this contact looks like a fault, sudden contact or it is a kind of unconfirmity, I must able to distinguish and then a type of unconfirmity accordingly the problems I anticipate the treatment also vary. Angular unconformity, just now I said, lack of parallelism of the beds on opposite on either side of the unconformity. That is a different type of unconformity. If this kind of rocks below and above are not parallel, blindly we say it is an angular unconformity. One is it is an angular unconformity. Second, there is an unconformity. Rocks below and above the unconformity. I said unconfirmed means I have already identified. Means above and below a particular contact, if rocks are not parallel to each other, that is there is an un unconfirmity that is angular unconfirmity. Lowest bed above the unconfirmity, if we have an unconfirmity, this is the lowest bed above the unconfirmity, consists of pebbles rich rock, they are called conglomerate, presence of conglomerate may indicate above a particular horizon. I have a conglomerate, I suspect unconfirmity below this conglomerate. So presence of conglomerate, if I come across below that, there must be an unconfirmity importance of the unconfirmity pebbles conglomerate bed we have mentioned in Windian mountains there are several conglomerate beds below that there are several unconfirmities these are the source of world famous Kohinoor diamond diamond in general so they are the source like Deshnoor we have said uranium mineral deposit in uh, South Africa, Witwatersand, huge world, biggest deposit of gold, etc. Yes, lowest bed above the unconfirmity consists of conglomerate. Therefore, for me, if presence of conglomerate, I suspect unconfirmity below it. Faults and dikes may be truncated. If there is an intrusion of dike, come that may be truncated, it may not. Why magma did not come and reach the surface, they are truncated. Possibly there is a, some unconfirmity. Therefore, the faults, if there is a kind of dislocation movement or like this, it is up to only this, above beds are not affected, there is possibility of unconfirmity. Therefore, these features I take into consideration for recognition of unconfirmity. Here also you see, this, these are all the, we have rocks here, we have the rocks here, these are all have different orientation, orientation I can take. Disconfirmity, para unconfirmity, this you see beautiful, again here, these are all the presence of sharp contact in color between a different layers, between different sequences. Presence of a conglomerate between the layers, between the this layer, this layer, if there is a conglomerate, then, then also possible. Paleontological evidences, fossil content. What is the fossil? Remains of fast organic activity evidences. We have recorded in a rock, we call fossils. Fossil means part of animals, hard parts preserved in the sediments, sandwiched between the sediments. They, uh, they are preserved and that is a kind of a record to understand past biological conditions, etc. We call fossils. And the study of fossil is a paleontology and paleontological evidence means fossils here, here, if are they different, then 
possibly there is an unconformity. Principle is, if it was one kind of one C, if it was a C, organism, 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 similar organism should have lived and when that organism dies, that is fossil, that kind of fossil, that kind of fossil, that kind of fossil should be here. But against this contact, fossils here and here are different, perhaps one up to this, we have one kind of fossil after there was a some kind of time gap and then this kind of organisms if there is present in between climate has changed according to the climate a different species of life must have existed their fossil record obviously changed therefore fossil evidence is another so what is non conformity one bed will be of igneous or metamorphic then this is a case of unconformity we have a contact we have igneous 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 then we have sedimentary then this case is non-conformity may contain fragments of lower igneous rock somewhere here if this rock sorry if contain the rocks of older igneous rocks in them then this could be an unconformity may contain a soil profile that is we have a layer of rocks a b c like that then there may be a layer of soil then p then q then r between p and c bed a weathered soil layer is present Generally, they do not exist between this layer and this layer, this layer, this layer. Soil is not there, only between this. Now, whether it is a in situ soil, a transported soil, we have to because often if when the rocks are inclined like this, surface water may bring and deposit some kind of clay that is also a soil between this layer and this layer, if just because there is a soil. I cannot say it is unconformity if it is a weathered in situ soil, soil not brought from outside. Uh, in that soil, I find the local fragments of rock. And then weathered soil zone, weathered soil layer between the different layers of rock, that is an indication of unconformity. So, Evidences which help in the recognition of unconformities are therefore difference in attitude of two adjacent rocks. Attitude means a different strike in a column. If these layers are like this, if these layers are like this, suppose these are horizontal. Now they have a specific different strike. All of a sudden, the rock's orientation changes above the particular contact. Then there is a possibility of unconformity. Example, if the rocks are inclined, especially this is so easy. For example, if I have a rocks are sloping like this, there then there may be a contact again if these rocks are sloping in a different direction. They may have different strike, this may have different strike. Then against a particular contact, if there is a change in a dip and strike pattern, that is an indication of unconformity. That is difference in attitude of two adjacent sets of beds indicate presence of unconformity. Remarkable difference in nature, age and type of beds. This bed, this bed. Even if they are horizontal in a site like this, this one kind of rock, this is another kind of rock, there may be an unconformity. If this rock and this rock have significant difference in the fossil content, possible nature of this rock and this nature of this rock, then there may be age, the age of this rock may be say 1000, 1000 million years, if this is just 500 million years, in between what happened? Why 1100 rocks, 
1200 rocks, 1300 rocks, all the continuous, but all of a sudden we have a gap. Sudden gap and in change in age of the rocks or type of folds here, no folds at all. Or here one type of fold, here one type of fold. Then we have the chances of presence of unconfirmity. Occurrence of residual soil, laterite, bauxite, just now I have mentioned, is another indication of unconfirmity. Considerable, considerable difference in the degree of metamorphism. Rocks below it are highly metamorphosed. They are not metamorphosed or not compacted. Then also there is a possibility of unconfirmity. Stratification, correlation and lithological peculiarity, peculiarities, that is layering, stratification. If I have a kind of, there is a layer, there is a layer and if this, there is a correlation, this exactly here, exactly here. But often there, if this is here, here it is may not be dissimilar. What is the message? Why it is in the same area, different part of a sedimentary basin, we have different nature, then possibly, possibly it could be an ang uh, unconfirmity. All of this and other evidences are inherently linked up with the process of unconfirmity formation. They have some relationship with the how the unconfirmity is formed. Therefore, these are all the evidences of unconfirmity for us. Friends, we have discussed folds, faults, joints, unconfirmity, etc. And I have repeatedly mentioned in the construction site, they are going to affect how exactly they determine the site condition, precaution should be varied or design, etc. In one way or the other, they affect the construction activities. Now, how exactly they affect our construction activities and the site, their presence or absence of these folds, faults, unconfirmity, etc., we shall evaluate now. So, we shall start with a dam. What is a dam? We have studied different types of dams we have studied. Now, what is the requirement of a dam site? The dam site, dam site should be of a narrow river. Then it becomes economical and can be completed in a shortest period of time without any much problem. This is naturally we look for. But if Fold, faults, unconfirmity present how it is going to affect. Then secure and sound bedrock we require for foundation, etc. Waterproof, there should not be any percolation, etc. But presence of joints or fractures, faults, unconfirmity, fold, etc. How our structure gets affected, we shall try. These are the requirement. High bearing capacity. The foundation rock should have high load bearing capacity. If there are joints, there are faults, etc., rock may be shattered. If they are folded, their strength varies. If there is unconfirmity, again depends on the orientation of the unconfirmity, etc., we have the problem. We may not get this kind of condition. Free from active faults, if faults are present, create problem. If faults are there, where if faults are there, is it okay? Well above the dam site, just below the dam site, downstream of the dam. Where if faults are there, how to take precaution, how it affects, then faults become active when extra weight of the dam is added. When we store the water, again there is a reservoir induced seismicity we find. Therefore, if a huge amount of water is stored, additional pressure come and faults can become active although they were dead or once we called them as a dormant. They create no seepage below the dam. We expect for wonderful dam. 
but presence of joints and faults cracks or unconfirmed unconfirmity there is a weathered soil along the soil layer water seepage may take place loss of water take place therefore no seepage should be there below dam site but if presence of this there is a possibility of this kind of process so in a dam site what exactly we therefore explore the geological site for the construction of a dam since the subsurface geology of dam and reservoir are very essential nearly similar although construction of a dam is less than 10% of the area reservoir occupies a larger area i have to look into both reservoir as well as the dam site plus dam site much thoroughly i have to it is may not be possible for me to investigate 100 sub square kilometer of reservoir spreads but dam site is just less than even 5% of the total area i have to inspect much more carefully therefore i may take several bore holes and take the core sample take the sample to the laboratory try to understand their porosity permeability many things they reveal which type of rock their thickness porosity joints faults shear zone deep and strike of layers everything i have to consider which influence their load bearing capacity so i will also take i will prepare a geological map collect the samples bring them to the laboratory in addition i study them for all these and plus i also take bore holes below the surface what happened i may collect some samples from the surface i also carry out electrical resistivity method bedrock bedrock mapping how 100 meter 10 meter 50 meter depth how the rocks vary i give simple example of a building in darwad opposite to the new bus stand in darwad a multi story building collapsed nearly hundreds of people died okay now have they not studied the foundation before construction of multi story building yes in any construction activities we do the foundation we take the soil survey a soil sample we test it and and have they not used the proper concrete steel etc yes that is fine then why the building collapse because all that they have studied is only few meter depth below 25 meter depth what was that condition they have not studied if there were caves like one day that cave collapsed entire building should collapse therefore for any major structure i have quoted the example of one building for any major structure foundation well below foundation may be few meter depth <laughs> but 5 10 20 30 50 100 meter below also i have to check i give the example of super dam site again i give you the example so well below the foundation we have to check electrical resistivity method bedrock mapping we call i just said super dam what happened in super dam this is the river on and this is the river we have to construct a dam across this river okay they have tested the foundation rocks they found foundation where the dam is to rest is highly jointed fractured weathered sheared etc what they did they excavated some 15 meter depth and removed it they found fresh rock fresh rock and they found now the site is good we can lay foundation and construct a dam but their curiosity they have tried again what may be further below how far this massive rocks occur to their surprise they found once again the jointed fractured sheared zone and then they have excavated them they got the fresh rock they thought 
Yes, it is now this is the site ideal condition to construct. But again, they have checked, they found below this massive rock, once again there was a jointed rock. What is that? We have a joint, we have massive, jointed, massive, jointed, hundreds of meter depth. Is it possible to dig up to 100 meter depth and construct foundation and dam? Is it economical? Not possible. Therefore, some other method they have adopted a grouting, ground improvement technique by injection of cement slurry, all those fractures, etc. They have sealed and then got a fresh on fresh foundation or they have constructed. It means because they have taken borehole samples, electrical resistivity, they could understand there there was a weathered or shear zone, shear zone, shear zone, fresh rock, fresh rock, fresh rock, shear, 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 like this happened. Therefore, electrical resistivity method is also important, but electrical resistivity that not that simple, therefore boreholes are also have to be necessary. Therefore, combination of these are involved in a dam site study. So, these are general investigation people do for dam site and major reservoir sites. What are the essential geological conditions we expect for successful dam and reservoir project? The site should be water tight reservoir basin of adequate capacity. Just a small quantity of water if you store not enough. Adequate quantity of water we should able to, the, it should be water tight such that we the stored water do not escape plus in which the rate of accumulation of silt is not very high, it is controllable below the expected level. That should be an ideal site that we have to search for. A narrow river channel, yesterday we have discussed a narrow wide valley, a narrow valley like that, uh, length of the construction, length of the construction, etc. vary. Therefore, a narrow river valley is ideal for construction, which can be blocked easily with a less cost and small dam. Foundation, safe foundation, we have to have a very good rock. That is an ideal condition. Provision for disposal of surplus water, we said spill away. That is excess water has to be drained out. Otherwise, if the water present remain below the dam site, it, if this is the dam like this, if there is a water present, it up develops uplift pressure. If this is the weight of the dam, this is the horizontal pressure due to the reservoir, this is the resultant force. Then, and the resultant force we said it should lie in the middle one third like that, then the structure is stable. Now, it all depends on T by W, horizontal pressure and weight of the dam. If there is a water present below the foundation, it develops uplift pressure acts against the weight of the dam if W component is reduced because of the uplift pressure that is effective weight. If reduced, T dominates tend to displace the dam. Therefore, foundation rock should be free from such uh, porosity, permeability, it should be waterproof. That's a safe foundation and there should be easy way to drain out the excess water. It should not move below, but it should be removed. Availability of the required raw material, once again we have said super dam, they had to bring the rock from a Bori, a village 25 kilometer away from the super dam. But by ropeway, shortest 9 kilometer route, they brought this material because nearby there was no other good material. It was highly weathered, etc. Huge quantity of construction material is required and that should be available nearby. So, these are the essential 
while construction and look for a reservoir a successful dam project we explore all these possibilities yes this is an embankment dam we have discussed earthen dam this is a gravity dam uh, like kya sagar or many other dam we have discussed gravity dam this is an arch dam super dam is an example by providing arch action we divert the pressure to the abutment we have to have a strong abutment rock the, the shear force develop this is the reaction of the abutment therefore because of this shearing nature of the force we have to have a strong abutment this is a arch dam depending on the local condition we have to decide and design different type of dam based on the geology the importance of the structural feature in the dam is something different now these are all in addition to the rock the deep and strike folds fault joints folds and uncomfortable how exactly they affect the dam site that is a additional in addition to the rock their crushing strength the porosity permeability etc we also have to look into example now strength of the rock is always greater when stresses are acting normal to the bedding plane means if i apply pressure and if something is stable because of by virtue of its weight because of its weight it is stable if if the weight decreases it is not stable this one this is one thing second when a load is acting perpendicular to the structure this is a layer of rock this is the load then when load is acting perpendicular to the structure the rock have high load bearing capacity it means orientation of the rock layers are important on the other hand if layers of rocks are like this then severe problems we have one is the resultant force and bedding planes are parallel to each other weak condition both have tendency to to slide therefore this is one condition weak second these are the reservoir these are the bedding plane along the bedding plane there is a possibility of seepage or escape of water therefore this is second possibility seepage of water may take place some of this water may move below the foundation may develop uplift pressure this is the second problem third problem is see dam foundation is resting on different type of rock this rock may be hard enough this may be soft hard accordingly i have to design the foundation i have to have a combination a complex design difficult to handle therefore when this layer drops especially if a dam is resting in this case it all through it is resting only one type of rock whereas the foundation is resting on different type of rock then complex design is involved i have to take into account every rock into therefore we have the problem now therefore if this is the case it is not a suitable site on the other hand if layers of rocks are sloping upstream towards the reservoir side this is the resultant force acting perpendicular to the bedding plane they also take good load like here but this is much better condition here condition with respect to the load yes it is good condition resultant force and bedding planes are perpendicular wonderful but layers of rocks we have again different layers of rock one advantage is water do not have tendency to flow below the they have tendency to flow back away from the foundation therefore there is no seepage of water or water going below the foundation there is no such question of uplift pressure etc but problem is we have different layers of rocks below since the foundation 
of the dam rests on different layers of rocks, I have to take into account different rocks load bearing capacity. Accordingly, I have to design. It means I have to have a condition where this rock is different, this rock is different, this rock is different, this rock is different. Accordingly, I have to design. I end up in a very complicated design, difficult to execute in the site. Yes, such problems arises if layers of rocks are horizontal, inclined, up, upstream, downstream, etc. This is equally true if rocks are sloping in one side of the valley. If this is the river valley and rocks are sloping, this is possible. That is also another case. There also seepage of water possible. Therefore, when layered rocks, I have to be very particular about the dip and strike. This is true for metamorphic rocks if they are foliated, cleavage. That is also similar way they behave. Therefore, attitude, dip and strike of the beds are very important in construction of a selection of the site for the dam. Now, suppose I have whether the layers are like this, the layers are like this. This is one problem. I may have the fault. Suppose this is the fault, then this is the reservoir. One possibility. Another possibility is if this is the reservoir, if I have a fault plane like this, instead of fault plane, if fault plane is like this, or fault is like this, or fault is like this, or fault is like this, fault can be oriented in any direction. Now, this fault has nothing to do with our dam and reservoir. Yes, we can get rid of this easily. Therefore, if we have a fault pane well below the dam site, fine, we can manage. But if a fault pane is moving below the foundation in the reservoir, below the reservoir, then they create a problem. Koina Dam, we have so much of problem because there are several faults. Through the reservoir, water percolate into, they lubricate the contact between this plane, this block and this block, facilitate movement, earthquakes. On an average, prior to construction of Koina Dam, 350 seismic records were there. 350 seismic records we have observed, means that much of earthquake. After construction of the Koina Dam, on an average, 1,500 shocks have been recorded in the instrument. It means due to construction of huge dam and reservoir, seepage of water, frequency of seismicity is increased. This we call a reservoir induced seismicity. Water percolating through the fault plane lubricates facilitate movement. More number of earthquakes are common. If earthquakes occur below the reservoir water, we call tsunami, underwater earthquake. Tsunami means very huge waves are generated. This may hit additional load bearing capacity factor. I have to consider another additional problem we have. If the fracture is deep enough, water percolating through this fracture may reach several kilometer, 10 kilometer like, 15 kilometer like, obvious we cannot say rule out. Water percolating through deep fracture, once they reach that great depth, they get heated and become steam like. Once they are steam, they can exert pressure. And once they exert pressure, they can crack, they can develop and fractures. So, and once the fractures are widened, volume increases, melting point lowered, lava forms, that lava can come up or earthquake, n number of these things can happen. If fault planes are like this, obviously water percolate and below the dam site uplift pressure. If this is the fault, directly water from the reservoir can escape. 
Therefore, I have to thoroughly investigate for presence or absence of faults in the reservoir site as well as below the dam site. And as far as possible, if fault plane is like this, shift the dam up so that we avoid the fault plane. Just we have to look for seriously investigation. Most dangerous because faulted rocks are generally shattered. Not only that, they are highly shattered, fractured, their load bearing capacity decreased because of cracks, their porosity is increased, they may undergo weathering over the time, etc. Different rock types are involved and because of this, if we have a fault pane on either side of the fault pane, different type of rock can be present. Then again problem in the design. Small scale fault zone can be treated effectively by grouting, but large scale faults we cannot satisfactorily improve the site. Centimeter scale we can excavate and throw it out and get a fresh bedrock on which structures can be erected. But if it is several meter, not that easy economical. Therefore, we have to thoroughly investigate for presence or absence of fault. Yes, effect of folds on dam site. For example, I have a, sorry, I have rock like this. If I select a site here for construction of a dam, this is the river. Now, the bedding plane here is perpendicular to the, means resultant force is like this. This is the bedding plane here like this. This site is ideal. Water has a tendency to move away from the foundation and move up lip or move towards the upward that is the reverse reservoir side, there is no seepage of water. On the other hand, if the site is like this, the resultant force is parallel to the bedding plane, weak site as we have already discussed. If I have a dam site here, this is the reservoir, we know because of this kind of tensional force, rocks are weak, tensional cracks we have seen. When it is weak means weak foundation is not suitable. Yes, if we have then this because of compressive force, fractures may develop. We know synclinal condition, artesian condition develop, accumulate water, water pressure is high. Obviously, upper pressure they may develop the crack, rocks are compressed, compressive fractures failure may take place. Again, this condition is weak. Therefore, if beds are folded into, then we have unfavorable, favorable, unfavorable conditions like this develop. In any case, this we call downstream. If this is a river flow, this is the reservoir, this is downstream side. So, downstream side, if rocks are sloping, this I should not construct, I can select a site here. I should not select any site in the tensional force is there, that is anticlinal part. Similarly, synclinal part, compressive force, there is an artesian condition like compressive fractures are there, it is not suitable. Means when beds are folded, the site become very, only one site is suitable here, 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 they are not suitable. So, we have unfavorable zone. Dam aligned along the axial region. This is the axial region. In this, we have if a dam is then this is not suitable. Again, similarly, if they are like this and this, then this is a synclinal part. That is once again not suitable for construction of the dam. Synclinal but situated along the upstream side. This we have some problem, therefore, we have to carefully deal with. If joints are there, what happens in a dam site? Remember, no site is free from 
joints where there are small centimeter or meter or hundreds of meter joints are there so we cannot escape out from the joints whether a reservoir or a dam site or any even small construction 30 40 site if we have a construction we do find rocks are jointed therefore the best way is a treatment is the only solution what is the kind of treatment we do the treatment is a detailed mapping of all possible joints, their character, their orientation, their depth, their intensity, their penetration, their nature, continuity with the depth. Accordingly, I can treat them, either I can just remove them if a surfacial, then cut them and escape. That is one possibility or else I can fracture them, seal them with the grouting, with the joint, if I can, yes, I can manage the joints. Friends, we will understand what is the role of joints and faults, force we have understood. Unconformity also influence the site. How exactly in a dam site or reservoir site, unconformity affects, we shall discuss.